Well, just ahead, we've got a first on CNBC interview with a top executive at India's Wipro. We'll chat to him about the company's growth strategy and plans to increase its market share in the space. We'll be back with that in just a couple of minutes. We've now got the opportunity to talk to India's number three IT player, Wipro, about its market share and how it intends to grow the business. Rajak Mathur, the CEO of Asia Pacific and Japan at Wipro Technologies, joins Adam and I live from the SGX in a first on CNBC interview. He's in Singapore to speak at the Global Entropolis Singapore 2011 conference. Pleasure to have you with us, uh, Rajak. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. I wanted to start off by uh, asking you about the situation on the macro front because I know that you you can't comment directly about your earnings given you are currently in a blackout period. But uh, given the slowdown that we are seeing in Europe and the US, of course, a couple of your key markets, how are you holding up and, and what's the mood like over there? So uh, I think the mood is uh, as follows. The, the CIOs there are having a wait and watch right now. Uh, it is very clear that uh, there is a, there is a <clears throat> after the, down, the downgrading of US, there is an issue in terms of the overall uh, structural issue of economy of US and hence the, the CIOs are now taking a view which is not a long term view, not even a, a, a yearly or annual view, but they are taking a short term view in terms of what, what kind of spends which they want to do. But having said that, I think we are still seeing sustained demand coming in, uh, especially in financial services, energy and utilities and, and also in retail and CPG. Uh, this is more than some of the other se sectors who are, who are uh, who very plain. Rajat, if the clients that you're dealing with have a short-term uh, view, how does that make it for you when planning your strategy going forward? Because you are um, um, looking at, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, offloading some of those U.S. assets. So, uh, from the perspective of how, how we want to be ready for this, I think we are going with our strategies of IT variableization to the customers. We are talking about uh, innovation in a constrained world to them. And we are talking about analytics, uh, which, is important, which is going to be very important for them uh, when you talk to, to retail or telecom or financial services. Uh, how can, on an on, ongoing basis, on a near real-time basis, we'll be able to provide them analytical support. So these are the three important things which we work on. And also uh, the fourth one which is going to play upon the, uh, the, the CIOs of the future is the, is the, uh, is the area of uh, <coughs> IT consumerization mm. of IT. So there's a, now the biggest spend on IT is not in enterprise but in consumer yeah. area. So these Roger, are the four areas. Let's talk yeah. about uh, your overall business because, of course, a large portion of it comes from the U.S., uh, yes. about 50 plus percent, 20 plus percent from Europe. Mm -hmm. You're in charge of Asia Pacific Japan, which counts uh, plus emerging markets less than 20. Um, how important is this region to drive growth at this point in time when U.S. and Europe are in these hot spots? So very important uh, in, the, in, the, in the sense that yesterday uh, I was in this conference that we, we heard from the, uh, the none other than the ambassador of U.S. itself that they are focusing on Asian countries mm. a lot more. They, they are asking the, the American corporates to come here and establish themselves because this is, the, this is the region for the future in terms of growth. So in our own sense, in the last three years, we have been growing more than 100% in this geography. So we clearly see that this is the next growth area for, for our company. Mm. And uh, in the last uh, three years, we would have grown at least about... 100% every year in terms of our manpower itself, whether the manpower is there for, for sales or for delivery, that's the kind of growth which you're seeing. So even with the cost pressures, uh, with wages going up and inflation, uh, you guys are not putting on, on ice the plans to expand your workforce? Not at all. In fact, we are increasing it. And uh, what about um, in terms of your, uh, you know, uh, in terms of how clients are spending money? I mean, is it uniform across all of your segmentations that we're seeing changes in the way they spend money, or are the Asian customers uh, looking at it from a different perspective? So I would like to divide Asia into two parts. So one is Australia and New Zealand, which is a little more mature, and also uh, Singapore. Uh, so these customers behave quite, quite similarly to the Western world. Uh, but the difference is that uh, still there's no, there are no breaks in this region. Uh, Australia has got a very strong economy so far because of uh, their, their, uh, <coughs> their, their platform of mining and uh, natural resources. Um, 
Singapore is doing well in terms of its uh, its business in in the in the financial sector. Uh, rest of the business is moving towards a little slowdown. Uh, they they want to do, mm. they want to watch, and that's how uh, we are also playing by and seeing how we can actually help them in terms of giving new stories on on IT. Mm, mm, okay. All right, Rajat, really good to have you with us today. Thank you so much for chatting to Adam and I here on Cash Flow.